Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Justin Andre. We're back. We're back again, you know? Glorious time to be an Arsenal fan. Absolutely glorious. Uh, before we get into today, if you enjoy my videos, please leave a like and subscribe if you're not already. Let's dive deep. You know, it's it's never easy being an Arsenal fan. I'm going to be honest. It's, it's never easy. Um, they always find a way to somehow surprise you, even if you're not expecting it. You know, it could... But, I mean, who are we kidding now? I mean, we kind of expected this. It's just... Being an Arsenal fan, it always gives you hope. It always gives you a little bit of hope. Like, maybe we can do this. Just maybe we can pull off something special and do something right. But then it all comes back to hurt you. Because your hype your hype was just up here. Your hope was up here. And they, they, they sold the dream. And really, you just plummet right back down to reality. And that's what being an Arsenal fan is like. And that's what we experienced yesterday during our Europa League tie with Olympiacos. You know, I was confident. I mean, we were at home. We only had a goal lead away from home, but we still had an away goal. So it was likely that we'd dominate at the Emirates and likely score more goals at the Emirates because this is our home turf. You know, we do pretty decent at the Emirates. But that was just not the case yesterday. A lot of people were writing off Olympiacos right from the gate. I mean, they were like, oh, the tie's pretty much done. They couldn't score at home. Arsenal kept the clean sheet. They scored an away goal. Arsenal got this tie in the bag. And even the odds were in Arsenal's favor uh, in terms of betting-wise. So it was a pretty done deal for most people. But, you know, if you're a seasoned Arsenal fan, you know, it's never a done deal. You always have to be cautious because that's because things can go wrong real fast. Arteta played an extremely experienced lineup. I mean, we were all guns blazing. He wanted to win this round. He wanted to move on to the next round of the Europa League. You can tell he cared. I mean, we had Pep, Aubameyang, uh, uh, Ozil, um, Lacazette, uh, all our main starters starting. This was our starting 11 that starts in week in, week out. And we still couldn't get the job done. And you could tell Arteta really, really wanted this. And it was essential to him because it's, it's essential to us because we need to make the Champions League. I mean, this also hurt us financially, but we'll get into that later. But the way we played today, I mean, it wasn't abysmal. I mean, abysmal is like Unai Emery ball, but it wasn't great either. We dominated most of the possession, and mostly that's because Olympiacos chose to sit back. They were waiting for us to make a mistake, and honestly, kudos to... Uh, Olympiacos, they did the job well. I mean, I don't think they were extremely impressive, but they did what they needed to do and they got through and that was their game plan from the start. Sit back and hope for their chances because they knew Arsenal would make mistakes and mistakes we didn't make. But we controlled most of the possession, which was good. You know, that's something I like to see. But we were just so sluggish and we were indecisive. You know, we'd go to the final third, we'd have, uh, you know, an opening uh, and... Really, we'd either play the wrong pass where we shouldn't have to, or we'd play the ball too slow and the chance was gone. It just it wasn't clicking last night, especially in the final third. And that's what killed us, because really, most of the chances we had were half chances. I know Olympiaco sat back and it was hard to break them down, but we could have, have chances, but we were indecisive in the final third. And that's ultimately what cost us. One player I want to really highlight is Shakhtron Mustafi. And that's the past three videos where I've highlighted this player, because... He didn't put a foot wrong, truthfully. He was the one that was honestly saving us at times. He was putting in uh, you know, tackles that were decisive and they meant a lot because if those balls went into the box, then Olympiacos could have scored on their breakaway. But Mustafi was there, he was cleaning up the mess, and he was commanding. And he truthfully was our best player on the pitch that day. And you, you take that as you like, but... Um, also, Pep was decent. Again, he was a little indecisive at moments, but he was definitely the one who was trying the most and creating the most chances uh, to score. But still, it wasn't enough because they were all half chances and we couldn't have a breakthrough. But, of course, you know, our defense has been a liability this season, to say the least. And uh, that's, that's kind of an understatement. It's, it's even worse than that. But that's exactly how we go behind. We go behind in the second half through a set piece. And for some reason, set pieces are a problem for us. Olympiacos literally have a free header in the box. I know that we like to do zonal marking, but nobody was communicating. The center back, I think it, I think it was either Bar or Cissé, I'm not sure which one, 
but nonetheless, their gigantic center backs has a free header into the box, and nobody pressures him. I, I want to say it's David Luiz's fault because you know I'd say it was that was his zone, but it was also the man that uh, I think it was a bombing that didn't tell him that he had a bombing was literally marking two people. I know it's zonal, but still, I mean, in that case, then Luiz then has to go out and meet the ball, which he didn't. He was indecisive, and guess what happens? There was a goal. And that just complicates things to the max because we have an away goal and they have an away goal. But it's in their favor because if they score and then we score a second goal and it's still tied, they go through because they have two away goals. So it just complicated the whole mess. But of course, not much happened then. I mean, we're still fighting and there's a little bit more urgency in us, but it still wasn't enough. We're only creating half chances. And then we go into extra time. Not much happened in the you know the first half of extra time, other than I think Shock John went off in the first or second half of extra time, and that was a big blow. Uh, I don't know the exact medical reports on him. I'm hoping he's okay because again he's been solid. I didn't think I'd be ever saying that, but he's been solid for us. And uh, Papa comes on, and that leads to complications later on. But um, another person that came on was Gabriel Martinelli, which really brought life to the game and I say that because he was the one that was asking questions of that Olympiacos back line before it was just so easy for Olympiacos to defend because we would literally just pass around them very slow no dynamic movement and they weren't really challenging the defenders it was just very easy for them to defend but as soon as Gabriel Martinelli comes on he wasn't afraid to run at defenders he wasn't afraid to whip in crosses he was the one that was asking the question and I can't commend that enough because not a single Arsenal player on the day could really do that other than Pep, in my opinion, um, during the game. So kudos to Martinelli. He asked the questions. But eventually, um, I forgot who whipped in the cross. I think it was a scuffed cross. Ball comes in the air. A bombing with an absolute world-class goal. And it was insane. I could not believe it. Uh, the scenes. I thought he had put us through with that amazing bicycle kick. I mean, beautiful. You could see how much it meant to him as well because he was buzzing after he scored that. I mean, rightfully so. It was a worldie, but um, yeah, uh, it means a lot. And the, the the reaction he had was telling because, you know, there's so many rumors that saying that he's going to leave if we don't get Champions League. And basically, he's come out and said himself that, you know, why are they talking about stuff they don't know? And also, I mean, you see the reaction and that's a good reaction because he, he wants to fight for the club, which is awesome. He's our captain. It was a wonderful goal. And like I said, I think most Arsenal's fans thought that's game done. But our game management was so atrocious. I mean, there was, I think, six minutes left on the clock um, in, this, in the second half. And we're still trying to attack. I know we're at home and we're just trying to get that extra goal to just seal it. But we're leaving ourselves exposed. That's when we, we keep possession of the ball. If we want to keep so much possession during the game, this is the time to keep the possession and not attack. But we didn't. We just kept asking questions of Olympiacos, going forward, going forward, which is fine if you score, but we didn't score. And what happens? We end up, there's a back pass to Leno, and um, he gives up a cheap corner. And Leno's been class, I don't want to get on to him, but that was a mistake that literally cost us the game. The corner comes in, and again, Luis and Socrates, they just don't pick up the man. It was so easy for, I think his name's El Arabi, just to do a tap-in. I mean, Luis didn't come and, and head the ball. Socrates was just not even paying attention, didn't even consider El Arabi to, to be there. It was just a disaster in the defense. We need to upgrade the defense because it's awful. Um, maybe Mustafi would have saved that if he was on, but obviously he wasn't. But yeah, upgrades need to be happening in the defense. But the goal goes in, and I, I, I couldn't believe it. And it, it's so frustrating, to be honest. It really is. Um, I don't mean to be negative because I'll talk about where this puts us, but oh, it's so gutting. It's so, ooh, it's disappointing. It's disappointing to say the least, especially because it's such a stupid mistake and it's a tie that in all honesty, we, we really should have won. And what just puts the icing on the cake is a, a couple a minute. I think a minute later, Alba has a sitter literally from six yards out, just a tap in and he scuffs it wide and it just puts the extra sting on things because that could have put us through it's it's so frustrating man it's the life of an arsenal fan and if you're an arsenal fan that's getting on top of Aubameyang's back saying how could he miss that uh, he literally was the only reason we were winning that game i mean he scored the goal that meant we were winning and he's also saved us this entire season so i'm pretty sure he gets a pass on that but don't 
you know, don't get on a bummings whim- whim- back about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it still sucks that he missed that man. It's it's such a sting. You know, I I didn't think Arsenal would win the Europa League. I'd like to see Arteta done well in the Europa League and set a tone for next season. And it, especially to go out this early. I mean, we were semi-finalists with Arsene Wenger. And God forbid how we were uh, finalists with Unai Emery. But we were finalists with Unai Emery. So to go out in the round, I think it's of 32. It's It sucks. But we're out. And there's nothing we can do about it. It stings. It hurts. But we have to look at what we expect from the season. Before Arteta came in, we, we were in a disaster. I mean, Unai Emery really destroyed the confidence that everything about the club really and it was disgusting it was abysmal people I mean I wasn't even enjoying watching football I just I didn't even want to watch it I did because I support the team but I didn't want to but now with Arteta came in there's a bit of positivity you could see the improvements he's made and we I didn't expect him to win the Champions League or the Europa League or you know win trophies at all this season let's be real before the at that point in the season, when Unai Emery was still there and it was out of worse, we didn't expect to even do anything. We were thinking about getting relegated. So the fact that Arteta's come in and made so many improvements, and yes, this is a setback, yes, it's unfortunate, but we still have things to play for. I mean, there's the FA Cup. That can get us into the Champions League. We need to work at that. There's fifth place, fourth place in the Premier League. If This is maybe a blessing in disguise because... We can focus now more on the Premier League instead of, you know, players being unfit because they're playing Thursday nights and they have to play on the weekend. Now we can focus primarily just on the uh, Premier League. You know, we can focus our energy in that and focus on the FA Cup. And maybe this is a blessing in disguise and maybe this will get us the Champions League. Maybe we're never going to get the Champions League with all three competitions focused on our mind. Maybe these two things that we're focusing on is going to be a blessing in disguise. And that's all we can hope for, uh, look forward to. I'm not blaming Arteta. I'm not mad at Arteta. You could see his plan. He put out a strong lineup. The players couldn't get it done. And it's unfortunate the way we went out as well. You know, it really is. So I'm not frustrated with Arteta or the team. The lads went out there and tried hard. Of course, I would make adjustments in the summer, you know, sell some of the players. But I'm not mad. I'm just so gutted, so disappointed. But we need to look to the future. The season's not over, and there's still things to be done. So that's all we can hope for is that we win the FA Cup or get fifth or fourth. What more can we ask for? The only thing that does suck about this is the financial aspect of it. I think, I forgot what the number is, but we didn't get a lot of money. I mean, we only made it to the round of 32. Yeah, there's not a lot of money to be had that way. I mean, um, you know, you get a lot of money for being a finalist, semi finalist, and obviously we didn't even get close to that. So there's that. There's also the fact that if we don't make Champions League, is Alba and uh, Lacazette going to leave the club. I wouldn't be uh, closed off from the fe- uh, of the idea that Lacazette should be sold. Maybe we should cash in on him. But Oba, I think we need to keep. I mean, he's providing so many goals. He's so underrated. I, top goal scorer. He's bound to be the top goal scorer in the past two years. He comes up with big goals. We saw the bicycle kick. Bar his miss, he's been unreal. So I think we need to keep Alba. But is he going to stay if we don't get Champions League? I don't know. We need to work through for that. But yeah, guys, I'm super disappointed. I'm sure if you support Arsenal and you're watching this, why wouldn't you? Um, you're disappointed as well. Um, yeah, what can I say? On to the next game. We have an FK, FA Cup um, game this weekend. It's at the Premier League. So let's look forward to that. I have tons more videos on the way. Uh, this is, yeah, like and leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we move on to the next game.